fluency is the combination of all areas of the brain working together and in sync. So when we're talking about reading in the brain, we have four different areas involved to be a comprehensive reader. The first area is in the front of the brain, and this is called Broca's area. Broca's area is the part of the brain that is the phonological processor. This means that Broca's area is responsible for processing the speech sounds of our language. The next area of the brain that is active in reading is in the back of the brain. And this is what Stanislaus Dehaene calls the brain's letterbox. The brain's letterbox is where we have the letters for our language, but when we start out, we don't have the letters, um, we don't have the letters stored there in our reading brain. Instead, the brain is, has different lines and squiggles and arcs, and it is the job of the letterbox of the brain to take these lines and squiggles and arcs and to combine them into letters that we recognize in our reading system. So the orthographic processor, or the brain's letterbox, is in the back of the brain. However, in order to attach the sounds to the symbols, the brain relies on the angular gyrus. The angular gyrus is responsible for taking the signals from parts of the brain and sending that message to other parts. So what we see is that the sounds from Broca's area and the letters from the brain's letterbox are sent to the angular gyrus to be matched up. This is kind of the phonics chip of the brain. Finally then, once the angular gyrus has attached the sounds and the symbols, it sends the message down to Wernicke's area. Wernicke's area is the meaning processor of the brain. It is the, um, the mental lexicon where we store all of the word meanings and connotations and context we have with, the, uh, with reading. So in order to be a fluent reader, we have to have all the parts of the brain working in concert in the right time in order to be fluent readers. What this means is that when we have a student who is a disfluent reader, it could be any of the different processing systems that contribute to the problem. Our job then is to determine which part may be the cause of a reading difficulty. If a student is a um, inaccurate reader, then we know that generally the problem is going to lie in the front of the brain with the phonological processor, Broca's area. This student will need remediation with phonics and possibly phonological awareness in order to become more fluent. Other students who still have the accuracy but are very slow in decoding, slow in their reading, have a problem with the orthographic processor. We can think of the orthographic processor as a Lego set, and we see that the base for the Legos is the brain's letterbox. And so what we have is we think of the little Legos as the neurons that live in the orthographic processor. And these neurons, or the little Legos, represent those neurons that are responsible for the lines and the squiggles that we have stored there. And eventually, as we have multiple exposures to those lines, to the squiggles, the little arcs, the neurons start building columns that become those letters that we see again and again in the English language. And so the brain forms the letters as a stored neuron column. The next thing that happens is that the brain begins to take those letters from the English language that typically occur together over and over. And it begins to take these bigrams, two letters occurring together, and to start forming those and adding them to the Lego column. Again, this happens with multiple exposures to the patterns of our language. Next, the brain starts recognizing morphological units, meaningful parts of words, possibly syllables that we see again and again, and these syllables become added to our neuron column, linked together and formed into a stack that we can recall automatically. Next, the brain begins to stick the meanings onto these words that we see over and over again. It also begins to attach words that maybe occur often with those words, and we start adding to our column. 
eventually we get to some of the connotations also that we have with language things like dog good cat bad and the brain continues to add to the neuron column eventually the expert reader again only after multiple exposures begins to form these neuron columns that are stored in the brain's letter box Expert readers then do not have to go through the entire process of using every part of the brain to read. Instead, we have these stored. However, we have a number of students that really don't form the Lego columns or the neuron columns in the orthographic processor. These are the students who need a different type of remediation for their disfluency. Repeated readings, working on the letter names as well as the letter sounds, using a multi-sensory approach will all help these students improve their reading and their fluency. So when we're talking about fluency, we want to be sure that we're identifying the cause for a disfluent reader. Is the cause located primarily in the front of the brain? And does that student have trouble processing sounds? Is it located in the back of the brain with the letters and our spelling system? Or is it the phonics part that is missing for our students? Finally, it could be that students have a very limited knowledge of vocabulary, and that would require a different type of intervention. Our job as reading interventionists is to determine what the possible causes of a reading disability are so that we can design an intervention that will best fit that problem.